first hundred if I go rah! All the performance stuff I'm doing, that's all anybody really cares about, right? If you're jumping into this video at random and you're going, why is the bike already stripped out? Is this an exhaust video? Kind of, this isn't a whole performance little mini series within a series about a build on our CR300L. If you have a CR300L, you should check it out. Done airbox mods, deleted all the emission stuff. We put CVR cams in it last video. This is going to be the exhaust. The next video is going to be a tuner and dyno tuning. If you need to see how to remove the exhaust, Go back to the first video, there's always chapters in there I'm utilizing, so you can go to that exact point, boom, see what's going on there. But I also would suggest that you go back and watch that video and kind of see some of the th thoughts are going in there. I know a lot of people just want to put a pipe on there and make the bike loud, but you really should do a little bit more to that. You don't have to go to this level of modifications, but you know, I, we kind of talk about why that makes power and why you need to match with tuning and you know, it, it's there's some good stuff in there, I think. Trying to make this a helpful build series for anybody out there with this bike. Kind of just give you a good general philosophy on how I think these mods should be taken. Exhausts are quite difficult to get for this bike. I had a Yo system with Revzilla ordered for a long time. Basically give it up on that. We even tried to also get an Aero, an Acro. Can't get them. The only one really seems to be available is this Moto X exhaust that you get from Thailand. Uh, it's, maybe it's some good exhaust, I don't know. What I don't like about it though, is it's clearly a FMF knockoff. In fact, if you go on uh, eBay, you can find them and they say FMF, they have to blur it out, because I'm sure FMF is sending them a cease and assist on that. FMF doesn't make an exhaust for this thing, not yet at least, and that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't like that, I don't like support and stuff like that. So, we've been on the hunt for one forever, and randomly I'm in the Discord, my Patreon Discord chat, and somebody, we were talking about a brand of exhaust, we went on the website and I was looking at it for a different bike and then happened to just scroll down and see, you can get one for my bike. And that's this company, Black Widow from the UK. Yes, these guys have exhaust for the CR300L. And not only do they have exhaust for the 300L, they've got like 20 different exhausts for the 300L. What they do is so smart, they make a number of different cans, they make it so that you can pick any of these cans. They also have all kinds of different lengths. You can go with a real short, short one. You can go with a super long one. I reached out to them, asked them if they'd be interested in working with me, and they said, sure. And they sent all this over to me. Thank you, Black Widow. You guys are awesome. Now I'm gonna have to get your uh, logo put in the bike somewhere. Fire gum, hot exhaust assembly paste. Look, they don't even just give you a little dinky tube of it. They give you a whole body. <laughs> this is this is way overkill. These exhausts, it never comes with the header, the head gaskets. You always have to go get those yourselves. They actually send you a set. Thank you. So obviously I had a lot of choices to make. I thought about going with a real, real short one, but I gotta put luggage on this thing at times. So I picked a more middle ground size can. It's, it's like layers within layers. They really, really package this well. This is very, very nicely done. <laughs> it's still in the bag inside here. Look at this thing. Wow. So this is a stainless steel system. This exhaust is a is a sort of trioval, uh, triangular thing. It looks super good. This is nice. Blacked out can with a carbon tip. So I don't have much experience with Black Widow exhaust. Looks well made. I did hit up my buddy Spicy 110 in the UK because he's got one of their systems on his bike. And Mr. Spicy is my dear, dear friend. And I said, Spicy, are those any good? I've had my Black Widow system now for what is it? Two or nearly three years. I'm not sure exactly. I'll put the date that I first fitted it. I have not looked after this thing. I'm not one of these people that, you know, cleans it every weekend. I let it get discolored. I've I've used Harpic on it. It's still absolutely fine. There's no pitting or rusting or anything like that. It all fits perfectly still. If he says they're good on YouTube, that is his real opinion. He's not, you know, some of these guys out there. Um, <laughs> he's one of the good ones. I think I am too, but I wouldn't say that. You have to think that for your own self. But yeah, that's the can I picked. I think this is 300 millimeters long. Uh, so there's there's numerous different options, sizes, things. I think this is gonna look so sick on the bike. So then the question is, so why is this better than stock? Well, to do that, let's take a look at the old exhaust and compare it to this one. So the main thing that we're after here, as far as performance, is just better flow through the exhaust. One, the diameter is a bit smaller than this one. I wouldn't say it's a massive difference. And I think, you know, going to a big diameter pipe doesn't necessarily Necessarily mean it's a faster flowing pipe. If you put too big an exhaust, you actually cause a bunch of turbulent flow. You would lose horsepower. But I do like that this is clearly a little bit thicker of a pipe all the way around. The weld and transition in there, pretty junky. Where on this one, it's definitely 
much better. The bins in the stock head are a lot more, you know, bop, 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 bop. They're not as smooth. In fact, I'm not even quite sure these are manual bins on some of these because the pipe narrows through the bins. Manual bending is when you bend the pipe and it stays the same diameter all the way through. There's an odd sort of transition in the middle of the, in the middle of this header. This one's not. And even just little things like, look how the stock heat shield attaches. I mean, okay, this tab's okay. This is like an afterthought with a pose clamp and a thing. Look at this, literal just tabs on the exhaust, way nicer. It let's us reuse our stock heat shield. I don't know why so many of these exhaust, uh, aftermarket exhaust, just don't think of that. Like, it's like, they're just like, oh, what, a heat shield? What's, what do you need that for? And when it comes to the mid pipe on the aftermarket exhaust, it's a similar story. Nice flowing, well-made. First, uh, sorry, I gotta lug this up here. It's all connected. The stock <laughs> mid pipe, clearly not as well thought out. And I mean, and honestly, what's the point of making this so high flow when you have what's right here, a catalytic converter? We're not gonna have that anymore. Oh, star of the show though, I suppose, is the exhaust can. This thing is big and heavy, very quiet. They have to put these on for them to be legal. One good thing I can say about it is an absurd, the good heat shield. You could put luggage directly against this. It's also very ugly <laughs> compared to this, which is, you know, like picking this up one-handed, I... God, that's... Yeah, where this is, you know, obviously much lighter. So obviously we're gonna gain a lot better flow through the exhaust system. Obviously a good bit lighter. Uh, I don't know the exact weight savings, but it's clearly several pounds. I guess too, it would depend on which can you get. If you go with the shortest can, it'll be the lightest. If you go with the longest can, it'll be a bit heavier. I doubt it's gonna make a massive difference. Let's get this thing on there. Now step one is, at least for me, is to set up everything and make it look like the picture. What you need out of that is the, this bracket, I'm not sure what you would call it, a bolt, the long bolt with one of these uh, dome dome washers. What I love about this is this actually has a pretty good spacing out on it already. This is a pretty good spacer. And why that's important for us is with a supermoto wheel, when the wheel comes up, it can hit the exhaust. Even for bikes that have a factory supermoto version, they never seem to think about that. They always just build the exhaust for the dirt version. I'm very used to getting longer bolts for these and adding spacers and kind of pulling them out a little bit. But here, this looks pretty, pretty good. For right now, we're just going to make that yay tight. Taking the stock exhaust exhaust off. You go back to the first video and watch. We showed how you got to get the gasket out. It's in there. And man, the stock one is really in there. Here's your new one. Don't reuse the gasket. I love that they actually send you one of these. Now let's see if this one will actually just stay in there. Typically these want to fall out. Um, yes, that's going to be the same thing here. And I went and just dabbed it with a little bit of trailer grease, you know, some nasty old stuff. Uh, that'll just kind of make it sit in there. And once the bike starts for the first time, usually this will just burn off. It's not a big deal. There it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the header on. We do reuse the, what do you call it, acorn nuts that came with it. Now in my case, because I've got this cage on here, it's a little tricky, but I did just test for this. It can be done. <laughs> Trick is, well, it's not. <laughs> I know I made that look very easy. It definitely was a little tricky though, the first time I stuck that in. <laughs> Doing this with this cage off would have been easier, but yeah, it would have been too much work to take the whole cage off. It's fine. I will suffer just a little bit to, Get it on there. All right, leave it like that, loose for right now. Now we can stick on our mid pipe. The directions at this point do call for us to use some of this exhaust assembly paste that they were so kind to send. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my finger and work it on the inside of this pipe because it's going to be going on the outside of the other pipe. And this will just help seal this up a little better. Now before we go slip it up in there, we wanna get our exhaust clamp. I think in this case, we're gonna want it like this. We're gonna come in from the back side like this. I have our header. Might need, I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit to get the, here we go, yeah, to get the, the bolt around the frame for that, and there we go. We'll need one of the shorter bolts, washer and nut. Should love how easily this is all lining up. I've had so many exhausts where it's like, just that right there would have been such a nightmare. Put the washer on the back side. Now, oddly enough, this nut on the back is a 13, a 13 millimeter. And I wanna know what's going on there, guys, in the UK, because that means it's probably not actually a 13, it's probably a standard. I guess they finally figured out there's nations that use the metric system, there's nations that bend to the moon, so, you know, wanna join the winners. <laughs> All right, good, yeah, just leave it like that for now. Now let's take the exhaust clamp with its rubber strap and get that all set up. It's gonna be a bit finicky to get in, but once they're in, they're usually fine. Try to work it on, going down one side to start. Come back over here and work on the other side. All looks like very well-made hardware, I gotta say. Let's get the exhaust can ready. Put a little bit of the exhaust paste around the inside. Nothing crazy, just a little 
coating of it around the inside. And look at that. I've used like probably less than a tenth of this entire tube. Now let's slip on our clamp. Do this gently. Keep it pried open. You can easily scratch the can putting these things on, so take your time. I think we're gonna have this clamp kind of like this, so it'll be hidden behind the, the fairing when it's on. So we'll go ahead and slip that on right now. And we'll slip our whole pipe up and on. Final bit of hardware, the one of the smaller bolts. I'm gonna grab the washer and the nut. The only one really remaining at this point. Slip that there on the back side. Obviously we can make some adjustments here where we kind of want this sitting between these two, probably higher is better. From here we need to start tightening up all the bolts in the system. And I know a lot of people will say go to the header first because you want to make that sure that that's tight and sealed properly. But in my experience, it's actually kind of better to start from this end and work the other way because you'll find that these sort of have more manipulation as to how things are sitting. Uh, the header should still seal, seal up fine. But what I like to do is sort of, uh, sort of snug down and then sort of a final tightened out. Kind of going in that direction. And I tend to find that it's always worked really well for me. In fact, the first thing I'm gonna do though, I'm actually gonna set this. I went and looked at the instructions, the picture shows it basically straight out like that. So I'm gonna tighten this top bolt up. The clamp itself, I'm just gonna put a little more hit on it, but not a lot. Get the clamp kind of in position, kind of like that. Snug that mid pipe up a bit. We'll come back to this clamp at the end. Got a little swivel here. This is more because of my crash cage on here. Bring this one down kind of evenly. Go back and forth on these bolts. You can look at the top of the threads and kind of see how much you've done. And yeah, those are pretty tight. And now we can do the clamps. I, so I do these last because everything else is going to shift around. This is not as important. This is going to be able to line up no matter what. It's looking really good, isn't it? Okay, we need to do them now is we need to get some rags, some kind of contact clear, and we need to go up and down the whole thing, get all the fingerprints off, any grime. Be extra thorough with this part. Let's reinstall our O2 sensor. May not be the worst idea to put a little bit of anti on there. And see, I am wearing gloves now because we've just cleaned everything. And that's in the exact same spot the stock one was. So they've done a great job with that. I've had several that move it slightly and it's a little annoying. You're like, okay, follow our wiring because it, since again, it does the exact same set of the stock. We don't have any silly goofiness of trying to make this fit. It just fits. Very good. And now we can reinstall our Stock heat shield. Oh yes, yeah. so glad I get to reuse this. And you notice mine's a nice blacked out color. That is because we sent it off to We Code It, who put a bit of Cerakote on there. I'm gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on these. Look at that, actually, these tabs are actually threaded too. I, I honestly was figuring you have to get a nut back there and sort of finagle it. No, 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 they did it. They did it super, super proper. So far, I'm very impressed with Black Widow exhaust. I have installed quite a number of exhausts over the years, and this is good. This is a very well-made exhaust. I mean, look how well everything has lined up perfectly where it should. And that's kind of a big deal. That quick wipe down. It's got a Cerakote on there. It's strong. It can take it. It's not some rattle can. Woo, that's in there. Usually these things are kind of a bear to get out. I've got some vice grip kind of needle nose pliers with some tape on the end. Oh, oh look at that. It just moved. Maybe this is not going to be a horrible pain to get out. Easy. That's gonna sound pretty good, I imagine. All right, it's come to that time that we can start this thing up. And uh, so the first time you start a new exhaust up, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure there's no exhaust leaks. We can take like a rag, kind of put it over the end. We're not trying to fully block off the end, but we're just trying to listen, listen and feel and hear for exhaust leaks. I also need to check up on top up here, on top of the head where we put our block off, make sure that's not leaking. Uh, we've got the new cams in there. We need to be listening for like weird rattles and tinging and banging and make sure that that's all good and happy. So, um, not gonna be revving it up and going, woo!
Josh smells like straight up emissions in here now. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna describe it as. It's an emission y smell. Uh, don't see any issues with the exhaust. Sounds great. It's loud. It's probably a little louder than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, we have the baffle. We can stick it in if we like. We'll add the tuner next video, throw all the body work on, of course, too. And we're gonna head back to the dyno and get this thing squared away. If you wanna see that video of the dynoing, if you wanna see how much horsepower this thing made, that video is already available on Patreon. They're always a video ahead, and the videos that they get are longer extended cuts of these videos. As you can see here, this video is this much longer on Patreon. So, you know, ad-free, sensor-free, if I didn't say that, yeah. And we have our Discord where you can go in there and physically chat with me and call me silly names and hang out with us all night. It's a good time. But we're almost there. We're over, I, we're definitely over the hill. We're on We're on the good end now. We're about to start making some real horsepower. We'll put this thing back up on the dyno. She's definitely breathing good now. <laughs> Stock can, I could pretty much cover it with my thumb. And here we can get, you know, I can, <laughs> we're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna get started next video. Here we go. I gotta, I gotta get going on it. But yes, we are, we are in a good place now.